It is written. It is established principle. And we are preaching about that. So write it up somewhere and put it in the front and say, It is written. It is written that man shall live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And then get to the word and begin to look at every word that applies to your spirit, soul, and body in every area of your life. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today because you care for me in such a special way. And yes, I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. Hey, hey. Why my heart is filled with praise. Say it out. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. Because you cared for me in such a special way. I will tell you what the devil's word sounds like. See if you have spoken it ever. <laughs> it's impossible. That's devil's word. Hello? When you say, it's absolutely impossible. That can't happen. I can't do it. It is impossible. Have you ever said that? Hello? <laughs> See, we have to learn what the devil's words are. That is not God's word, my friend. No matter how difficult your situation is, never open your mouth and say it's impossible because for God, all things are possible. Amen. To him that Amen. believes, all things are possible. Amen. So never stand in the midst of your house and open your mouth and be saying, that's impossible. 
You know, we can't do that. Well, no, that's the devil's word. I can't afford that. That's the devil's word. Some people say, well, what's wrong with saying I can't afford that now, brother? No, let's not say I can't afford that. I can afford everything that God can afford. That's what it is, basically. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything more than that. I'm not going to explain my situation. I'm, going to, I'm not going to open my wallet and show you I got only 10 rupees, you know. That's why I'm saying I can't. No, 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 no. Not go into those details. Stick with the word of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. By not what's in your pocket. Not by what's in your bank. Not by what your daddy's got or your rich uncle's got. Man shall live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. My God is all able. He meets all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Therefore, I choose not to say I cannot afford it. I refuse to say it. You know. Plenty of opportunities come. I remember in my early days, you know, plenty of opportunities. People say, we got to do this, we got, and I, you know, at that time I really, you know, was not in a position to do it immediately. You know, I will say, we will do it. Just wait. We will do it. You will see me do it. And like this, in the last 30 years, I've seen everything that was not possible has now possible, become possible now. I've seen it in reality. I'm, not, I'm telling you, I've actually seen it right before my eyes happening. Everything that was impossible has become possible. Everything that I could not afford, I can afford. It changes. It changes according to how your mouth changes. That's one of the greatest discoveries I've made. I have discovered what Jesus meant when he said, it is written. This is established law. In God's kingdom, if you want to live in God's kingdom, if you want to live by God's method, if you want to live the kind of life that God wants you to live, that kind of life, you have to live it on this basis, my friend. This is the way it works. You can't talk all that stuff, junk that you talk, and live this kind of life. You got to talk this talk. Then all those other things that, that can't afford business, that impossible, thing, everything will change and align with what you are saying because by your words, you shall live. Amen. That's God's order. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. Every word. Every word concerning your spirit, soul, and body, your work of your hands, your family, your social life, your prosperity, everything, by every word, by every word. So, it's impossible is the devil's word. Can't afford is devil's word. I'm poor is devil's words. When I was growing up, I remember a lot of people in the church were poor, but they never forgot to mention that they were poor every day. They declared that they were poor. When they got up to testify, they declared that they were poor. I felt like some of them were proud and poor. <laughs> Two evils going together, destroying them completely. Poor and proud about it, you know. <laughs> no. To say that I am poor is devil's words. As far as I'm concerned, it's devil's words. Where in the Bible does it say that you are poor? The Bible says you are the children of the king of kings and lord of lords. The maker of heaven and earth. See, the, see when Abraham returned from the warfare against four kings. One time. With 300 serv 318 servants in his house, he went and fought with four kings. Wanted to rescue Lot and his family, basically who were living in Sodom and Gomorrah and taken as captives. He goes and rescues everybody and gets even their gold and silver, everything, and comes. It's heaped up right in front of him. And the king of Sodom comes and says, you take all the gold and silver, just give us our people. We are very thankful to you. You keep all the stuff. He says, no, no, I will not even take a shoe latchet from you because I've lifted up my hand to the maker of heaven and earth. What wonderful words. I always think about it. 
He says, my hands are lifted up and stretched out to him, the maker of heaven and earth. Who do you think I am, he says. I'm not going to stretch my hand and take this stuff from you. Your gold and silver, you take your gold and silver and go. I don't want nothing, not even a shoe latchet, he says. Because I am going to stretch my hand out to my God, the maker of heaven and earth. I will lack nothing. I will have everything. Because he is my God. That, that was a governing principle in his life, you see. See, when Lot wanted to separate from Ab Abraham, and they couldn't, both of them were very rich. Lot just hung around with him and got rich, you know. And uh, so that the earth could not bear their wealth. And at one point, they wanted to be separated. So Abraham gives the first choice to Lot. Read that story. He says, take whichever way. You want to go left, I'll go right. You want to go right, I'll go left. I'm sure Sarah and all the rest of the family should be saying, you fool. God only called you. You take the right and left first. Give that guy whatever is left. Don't give him first choice. God only chose you. You must choose what the best and leave him the rest. He said, no, no, no. You take whichever one. Why? Because if you take the left, I will take the right, and the right will be doubly blessed than the left. <laughs> because I'm God's chosen man. My God is my God. God will bless me abundantly. It doesn't matter right or left or front or backwards. It doesn't matter north or south or east or west. My God is a God of blessing. See. So man must live by the word of God. That is an established principle. It is written means exactly that. It is written means that man, that, uh, that God has ordained that man should live by his word. That in every situation of life, he must be careful to choose what he says and go by what he says, not by what the devil says. The whole battle there between Jesus and Satan hinged on that. Devil is saying, make these stones into bread. Jesus is saying, no, 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 no. I know how I will live successfully. Only by the word of God. I will not listen to you. I will not do anything you say. I will not obey you. I will not give heed to you. You cannot talk to me and make me do anything. I can make the stones into bread, but I won't make it just because you say it. If God told me, I will do it. Not because you tell me. Especially if you tell me, I won't do it. That's his position. It is written. Everybody say, it is written. <laughs> Write it up somewhere. See, sometimes when you get a revelation of these things, you must hang on to that. It is written. You know. Tomorrow you shouldn't say, well, brother, I didn't know. All no, I preached it here. <laughs> this is the way you should live. This is the way for success. This is the way of moving forward. This is the way of increase. This is the way of victory. It is written. It is established principle. And we are preaching about that. So write it up somewhere and put it in the front and say, it is written. It is written that man shall live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And then get to the word and begin to look at every word that applies to your spirit, soul, and body in every area of your life. So this is how he ruled he ruled and reigned and won the victory over the devil by every word. Now let's go to, so, so when he said it is written, the devil was utterly defeated, you know. Till now, he has not recovered from it. <laughs> Just those three words completely, you know, got him defeated there. And now not only Jesus, Everywhere, everywhere this revelation preach, is preached. People are doing that. See, now on you'll be doing this, you know. I've been doing this for some time. You know, you'll be doing it. Everybody will be doing it. It is written. The devil hears it thousand times a day. It is written. It is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. All right. Go to Psalm 8 itself. Let me read from verse 1. I want to point out something to you in verse 2. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth, who have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained strength. 
because of your enemies that you may silence the en enemy and the avenger. Look at that. I want to focus on verse 2. <laughs> Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants. What is that? Nursing infants. Out of their mouths. You have ordained strength. There is another thing that is mentioned here as being established. Something that is established. What is established? See, in my margin of my Bible, it actually gives an alternative translation for ordained. It says established. In other words, you can read it like that. In the mouths of babes and nursing infants, you have established strength. In other words, God has established certain principles in this world. One is that man should live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And this verse is talking exactly about that. Out of the mouth of infants, uh, nursing infants and babes, have you ordained or established strength? That means you have put strength in the mouth, in the words of our mouth. Man's mouth is meant to take the word of God and speak the word of God. The word of God is powerful. It created the world. It's creative word. And that powerful word of God, when it gets into your mouth, it doesn't lose its power. It doesn't diminish in its power just because it got to your mouth and you're speaking it now. The mouth is different, but the words are the same. Therefore, I say to you, the power is the same. The same creative power of God works through your mouth as it worked in the beginning in God's mouth. That's what it's saying. Out of the mouths of babes and sucking infants or nursing infants, they're still at that stage. Have you ordained strength? Now, what does it mean? It, does it mean that the babies are going to talk? The babies were, they were still drinking mother's milk in that stage. Are they going to open their mouth and talk? Is that what it's saying? You must think when you read the Bible a little bit. What it's saying is this. Spiritually, you may be an infant. You may have just come to Christ. You may have been a Christian just for a few seconds. It's all right. You may be a nursing infant, a babe in Christ, and it does not matter. If you understand one simple truth, one law that has been established by God, you will have amazing victory in your life. And that truth is, your mouth is the secret for your victory. God's word in your mouth is going to bring you victory. God's word is in your mouth is the way in which you live. And God has ordained strength. Nowhere else. In the mouth, he has ordained strength. Hello. In the mouth, he has ordained strength. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't matter if the, if the man is a spiritual babe, spiritual infant, still in nursing stages, just now come to Christ. If he just understand this one truth, that if he'll open his mouth and declare every day, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He shall not want because he shall live by the word that he speaks. Strength will come out of that word that he speaks. It will strengthen him. See, these are the things that you need to understand from the scriptures, you see. God has ordained strength in the mouth of the babes, and nursing infants. Why? Because of the enemies. Because of your enemies. Who's the enemy? The devil is the enemy. That you may silence the enemy and the avenger. That's what it says. So how does God silence the enemy and the avenger? The enemy is the one that is always speaking ill of you. He's always accusing you. The accuser of the brethren. He's always trying to find fault with you. He's always putting you down. And the way to silence him and the way to stop him in his track, the way to make his work nothing, God has ordained strength in the mouth of the babes. Even as a young Christian, very new to Christian faith, you can have absolute victory and dominion over Satan. How? If you understand this one truth about the words of your mouth, you can have victory. Some people think for that it will take 25 years of being a Christian, you know. 
So people are very proud about how, you know how long I've been a Christian? 25 years service, one man said. I said, this is not government service, you know. <laughs> we don't give you a promotion in 25 years. <laughs> Automatically, you know. After so many years, you get this, you know. No such entitlement here. <laughs> you can be a Christian just today. You may give your heart and life to Jesus just this moment, from the very next moment. If you will understand this one little truth and think about your mouth as the source of your strength for your life to win in all the battles of your life, you will have victory. God has ordained strength in the mouths of the babes and nursing infants because of the enemies. You can defeat the devil. See, God, see, that is what brings glory to God. You see, you calling up the greatest evangelist in town and him praying for you and taking care of the devil is not glory to God. It's glory to the evangelist. It's glory to the pastor, but not glory to God. What is glory to God? You being a Christian who doesn't know much but knows this one, one thing that you shall live by the every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God and you defeat the devil every day. Jesus defeated him in the wilderness when he was tempted. Jesus defeated him on the cross when he was hanging there. That is why I showed you last week about the snake, the, the snake, that the brazen serpent that was lifted up on a pole, right? We talked about it. Why Jesus is depicted there as a brazen serpent on a pole in the Old Testament? Why, why did Moses and Aaron lift that up and everybody that was bitten by snakes looked at it and were healed? Why? Because it, it, it showed that Jesus bore our sin and our curse upon him. As it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree, the Bible says. So Jesus hung on, a, on the cross of Calvary as the cursed one. And in the Old Testament, therefore, Jesus was depicted in the form of a serpent, a cursed creature. Moses was asked to put it on a pole and lift it up before the people. Tell the people to look at it. That was a foreshadow or it was a, it was a thing that announced Christ and what he was going to do, how he was going to take our curse. But not only that, not only because he took our curse, he was depicted as a Satan. Something else is depicted on the pole that was lifted up on the, in the wilderness. And what is that? The defeated Satan. What kind of serpent was there on the pole? Brazen serpent. That's why I said if you brought a serpent here, everybody will run away, including me. Right? But if you brought a brazen serpent and put it on a pole and lift it up, we'll come close and look, take a good look at it. We are not afraid of it because it's just a brazen serpent. It can't damage us. It cannot do anything to us. The brazen serpent on the pole, therefore, spoke of the Satan who has been paralyzed as a result of Christ's work on the cross. The paralyzed Satan. So when Moses and Aaron was told to lift up the pole and the brazen serpent on the pole, what they were lifting up, or what it actually represented in New Testament terms was that by the preaching of the cross of Calvary, the defeat of Satan is affirmed, declared, and proclaimed so that people who see it by your proclamation, people who see the cross and how things happen there and how the devil is paralyzed, when they see it, they will take victory. And they will, they will defeat Satan. And God wants Satan to be defeated by you every day. By you and I every day. The defeat of Satan is going on every day. Not only did he get, get it good on the cross of Calvary. Not only did, it get, did he get it good when Jesus was on this earth. He's getting it good every day, left and right, all over the world. Every Christian is walking all over him. You know. He's ordering strength because of the enemy.
Jesus, triumph in his name. Thanks be God, who always causes us to win. Yeah, thanks be to God, who always causes us to triumph in his name. Thanks Clap be our hands to God. And thanks be to God, we have over. Over. 